are you motherfuckers? I know I look new and improved, like a million percent more beautiful, and that's because your boy just got a new camera. All right, I'm making big moves. I'm actually in a resting room today so I can show you guys some of the shit I'm talking about. I'm not just rambling in front of my bed. But we are going to get into this right now. As you can tell by the title of my video, today I'm talking about top position. This was my best position in high school and college. In college, I, I don't know, I was like a mediocre top position person. But I was definitely better at that than I was neutral and uh, bottom. And in high school, I scored a ton of points, won a bunch of tournaments. I did really well with my top position. So I'm going to explain it to you guys right now. So this is basically my Bible for top position, okay? It starts off with the different forms of control. You have friction, the pressure you have with you and your opponent, your hands, and your legs. You have to use all of these things to control your opponent, all right? If you plan on turning them, you have to use all of these things in unison to control your opponent and to stop him from getting up and away from you and scoring points or reversing you or just fucking you up, making you look like a bitch. All right? So remember, first things first is friction. All right? You guys may be thinking friction. That's like from science and shit. I don't know what that means. Come here, Johnny. Come here, Coach Johnny. Uh, sorry. Turn this way. This way? Yeah, turn this way. Okay, so a bad wrestler. A bad wrestler would start, right? Tweet, the whistle goes, right? And I'm still over here. You see all this space right here? How I'm not touching Johnny. How like, right? We start the match, I'm in, I go, and right after the whistle, I just maintain this position. A good wrestler gets as much contact with his body as he can with Johnny's, right? I'm trying to keep my hips below his, right? Because if my hips get above his, then I'm starting to get high and he can grab my head and stuff. Where you can do some bad stuff to me. Okay, so <laughs> you want to have as much stuff touching your opponent as possible because, like, the more surface area you have touching him, the more friction there is in between you and him. And the harder it is for him to regain control of his hips and for him to control your arms and stuff. You know what I mean? So first things first is you want to be glued onto this guy. You want to, like, when you go for a claw, you want to have your entire arm touching him, right? You're not going to go for a claw and have all this space right here, okay? You wanna go for a claw, and you wanna have this really tight, you wanna make as little space in between you and your partner as possible. You're trying to pull him in, right? The more pressure you can apply, the more friction there is, okay? Pressure and friction go hand in hand. Friction, along with friction, pressure goes right next to it, okay? So what pressure is, is, so friction is how much of me is touching him, Pressure is how hard I'm touching him, okay? Like, with my finger, okay, friction also relies on pressure, but like, see like right now, I don't have a lot of friction. Like, Johnny can move around under me and like I can move it, it's easy. Okay, but if I push down really hard, it's really hard for Johnny to get his shoulder out from under my finger, you know what I mean? It makes it, he has to put a lot more force into moving his shoulder so that like my finger gets off of it. The same principle works with like, your chest and your torso and everything when you're on top, okay? How you, the only difference is instead of like using my arm to push into him, you're using your feet to push your torso onto him. You're trying to push him forward. You know what I mean? You see, look where my hips are, right? When I'm pressuring him, I'm trying to keep my hips, I'm trying to keep this hip bone right here under his hip bone. You know what I mean? If it's over it, then my pressure isn't the same. I can't really push him like forward, you know what I mean? I can still keep pressure, but it's not nearly as strong as when I'm right here. You see what I'm saying? So, you need to be using all of the strength in your feet, right? It should be the toes of your, the, the toes of your feet going to the mat, and you're like, using all of your strength in your leg to bring yourself forward. You wanna bring yourself forward and like this. Right? Ideally, you're just like this, right? You're perfectly flat out. It's almost like a sprawl. Yeah, it's almost like a sprawl. But you're trying to keep weight on him. You're trying to artificially produce weight that he has to bear. You know what I'm saying? That'd be great if I could just break down Johnny and keep him flat with just my amazing hips. You know what I mean? But not all of us can do that. Not all wrestlers are such pussies that they let themselves get broken down with only pressure. 
So in those cases, you need to control your opponent. The ways you control your opponent are with your hands and with your legs. There really aren't that many ways. There's like a two-on-one Farney far ankle, tight waist far ankle, legs, western hook. There's like some other stuff, but like there's pretty much like max 15, 20 things that you can do with your hands and legs to control your opponent, okay? But understand that you need to use all of these things in order to control your opponent. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like your arm bars, your two-on-ones, your halves, your leg rides. You need to use all these things to control them and use your hands and legs to do that along with friction and pressure. All right. Now, when you get like when we get into actual wrestling, when I'm on top, the things that I need to be thinking of, right, are what he's going to do first. As the bottom person, my my ideal scenario, okay, is where I regain control of my hips, I create space in between my opponent and his hips, right, so that I can relieve that pressure, I can relieve some of that friction, and I can gain control of the hand, all right, so that he can't hold me down, so that he can't control me, all right? You resist with the hips. Um, there isn't much control you can do from top off the first move with your legs, so most of the time people aren't really worried about getting controlled with your legs, you know what I mean? So first things first is I want to stop his move, right? As the person on top, he wants to get space with, from his hips and my hips, right? He wants to relieve that pressure. He wants to relieve this. So when he stands up, you see, when Johnny stands up, he gets his arm away. He fucking, like, some space is created with this and he hops to his feet, right? In order to stop that, you have to hit one of your first moves. Your first move is a claw, is a spiral ride, is a two on one, is a far knee, far ankle, is like, all of these first moves have something fundamentally similar, and it's that you, like, with, uh, with the chop, you have, like, the whole time, you have to maintain control of their hips. You know what I mean? When you're spiraling, right, my whole torso is on him, and I'm grabbing him, and I'm pulling, and I'm pushing, and my hips are on him. You see how my hips are above his, right? If I go into a spiral ride like this, this is bad position. Johnny can just hop over me and start beating me up like the fucking soft ass kid I am for letting my hip hit the mat. When you're stopping his first move, right, you're trying to maintain the friction. You're trying, when you go for the, sh or I'll go on this side. When you're going for the chop, right, you're hot, like, personally when I go for a chop, I pull, up, I pull over on this hip, right, I'm right here, I pull over on this hip, and I'm trying to collapse this arm. You know what I mean? I pull up on this hip, I try to collapse his arm, I try to bring him to a hip, I try to keep my hips high. You know what I mean? But the idea, the fundamental is still there. The idea is still there, right? Stop the move and maintain control, all right? You start off in referee's position with control of his hips, right? This arm is controlling his hips. This is what is controlling him from, like, getting up and away from me. This arm is controlling him from, uh, is stopping him from getting up and away from me. You have to use these things to your advantage. So, once you've successfully stopped the first move, once you've successfully gotten the spiral ride, once you've successfully gotten the two-on-one, gotten the far knee, far ankle, whatever it is, once you've stopped his first move, okay? And you know, sometimes it's not the, like, it's not the first thing that stops his first move, you know what I mean? Sometimes he's really persistent and keeps on going for a stand-up, or he goes for a switch, or he just keeps on going for like one thing to another, to another, to another. The point is, you need to stop him from creating the space and getting away from you. You're just trying to control him underneath you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you shouldn't be worried about t getting a half or getting an arm bar when he's still trying to sit out, when he's still trying to stand up, you know what I mean? You just need to focus on keeping him under you and knowing that you have him under you. And you're gonna have this feeling like, all right, he's locked in. Like, he can't get away. Like, I'm on top of him. You know? So once you stop the first move, you work on gaining control. And then you gain control with, you gain control by switching to a two on one, or an arm bar, or a half, or putting a leg in, or putting, you know what I mean, something in, in order to gain control. For example, right, here, get that done. For example, let's say 
I put, I get the spiral ride, right? I stop his first move, like I got him good, and I put a leg in, right? That's my first position of control. This foot being in here is my first step of control, right? I'm controlling his shoulder and his torso and his hips, but as far as appendages go, this is the first thing that, like, as far as steps towards turning him, this is the first step, you know what I mean? And it's the same thing where, let's say, I get a spiral ride, I'm breaking down flat, right? And then I go for a two on one. Okay, this is the first step towards turning him. All right, I can't turn him with a spiral ride. I can't turn him with a far knee, far ankle. I can't turn him with a tight waist, far ankle. You know what I mean? You have to work on controlling a position. You have to control one of these things and turn him over it. You know what I mean? So like, get that flat. For example, with, uh, with a half, right? I'm controlling this shoulder and I'm controlling this shoulder, right? I gotta pick this shoulder up, I gotta keep the shoulder down and I control both to put him on his back. You see what I'm saying? That principle holds true with every position in wrestling, every top position in wrestling. So you can interchange any position with anything, right? You can get two legs in and an arm bar and you can make something happen. You can get a half and a western hook and you can make something happen, you know what I mean? You can transition from that. Like, it doesn't always have to be like super perfect, but just controlling them is enough. Knowing that you have them under you is enough. Once you've, once you've done your first move, once you've gained control of your first thing, let's say you put a leg in, let's say you got a two on one, right? Then you start collecting, you start working on other things or scoring points, right? You can work on tilts and stuff, but as far as turning goes, I'm gonna work on collecting other things, okay? Now, how do I do that? Personally, I think the two-on-one is a very expensive move and it's a transitionary move. It's more of a gain control move instead of a secondary, it's, it's more of a stop the move instead of a gain control, you know what I mean? Because I'm using two hands to control his one arm. Does that make sense? It's very expensive as far as my appendages go. I can't use this other arm to do anything else. I can't use it to push him down. I can't use it to leverage him in any other way. That's why you can't really turn someone with a two-on-one. So you want to transition onto one of the better forms of control where you only use one arm to control his arm, which is like an arm bar or half. Once you gain control, you need to collect other things, okay? So once I have, so once I have the legging, right? I have the legging, then I gotta start looking for my crab ride. Then I gotta start looking for my power half. I gotta start looking for my regular hat. I gotta start looking for my guillotine. You know what I'm saying? Crossface. I gotta start looking for a second thing to control. I, start, I gotta start looking for a third thing con to control. And once you start getting to the second and the third thing, then breaking them down flat becomes so much easier. You know what I mean? Once you have an arm bar and a half and a leg in, then it becomes so, so, so much easier. You know what I'm saying? So just focus on following the steps. Focus on like gaining control, maintaining control, switching to the next thing, gaining control, maintaining control, and knowing when to give up, knowing when you've lost a move, knowing when you're too high on his hips and you've got to restart. Know when you're not going to hit the spiral ride. Know when you're not going to hit the far knee, far ankle. Know when you got to switch to a single leg off of his stand-up. You know what I mean? You got to respond to him as, like, as much as you have to think about this. Okay, it's a very complicated video. I hope this helps you guys out. I'm gonna be making a whole lot more content, a whole lot more footage. Uh, this is Johnny, I don't know if you guys have seen him. He might've been in other videos. He's gonna be in a lot of my videos. But um, if you guys like that video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Check me out, check out all my other content. But until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.